Well, it's about time I lived up to the archivist part of my channel header, so welcome to The Archives, a retrospective show about comics. Be it focusing on a specific character like we are today, a storyline, or just a title, this show marathons comic books from the big names like Marvel and DC to the lesser well-known names like Oni Press and Dynamite in order to excavate and archive the rich histories buried deep underneath the wikis and retcons. With that said, let's begin this in-depth retrospective with the feline fatale herself, Catwoman. The tale of Selina Kyle's publication origins are pretty straightforward. Bob Kane and Bill Finger wanting to add a bit more sex appeal for the men and an attempt to widen the female audience created a femme fatale based around the original vamp herself, Jean Harlow. Though Hedy Lamar has been raised as another possible inspiration, Kane himself actually named Harlow, so that could just be apocryphal. As for her motif of cats, it's actually really easy to see why Soane would pick cats as a theme. Though I've heard some criticism that his reasoning was a bit chauvinistic, look it up if you want to know what I'm talking about, it's in Bob Kane's 1989 biography, Batman and Me. So she made her first appearance as the cat in Batman number one in 1940, with no mask but killer looks, at least drawn for the 40s anyways. In this, she's a mastermind thief who uses those stellar looks to muddle Batman's mind so she can escape with the necklace she stole. Interestingly, her next appearance in the following issue has her trading information to Batman to evade imprisonment, not to mention trying to double-cross everybody and get Joker's loot in the scuffle. It was this issue that she was first referenced as Catwoman, though with a hyphen and still no real cat theme, so mostly it's name only. Next, she pops up in the next issue, only this time in her first official costume, which... Well, the bright yellow and red coloration with the furry full head mask is kind of awkward, but she's not really a burglar yet, so I can't hold that against her. But in this, she gets double-crossed by her gang only for Batman to rescue her, but before he could lock her up with the rest of the crooks, she uses those feminine wiles again, cementing the first on-panel kiss between the two. Yeah, it is so she could slip out while he's adjusting his tights, but still, it worked pretty well, and it's how she gets away from Batman in her next appearance in Batman number 10, The Princess of Plunder, where she's sporting a new black and purple version of her furry cat face costume. But here, we also see Batman save her life from a rogue henchman, showing her actually possibly developing feelings for him because of it. So, Batman issue 15 starts off with her riding a cat through the sky. It's only the title page for her story, so don't get excited. Wait until the Silver Age for that. This one actually shows a hell of a twist, with Catwoman falling in love with Bruce Wayne and actually going straight for a time. Straight being that she's no longer a crook. The problem with that is someone else loves Bruce and Catwoman, seeing if Bruce really loves her back, pretends to be that woman, and, well, Bruce being Bruce says that he's just doing a favor for Batman, breaking Catwoman's heart and turning back to a life of crime. It's not as emotional as it would have been written today, but still is pretty interesting considering this could be the start of their on-off relationship. She then seduces Alfred in issue 22, just to trap Batman, which fails, but then in her next appearance in number 35, she's actually being fingerprinted and being locked up. Yeah, she does escape on the next page with some kind of hypnotic pendant, but it does at least seem to be a sort of follow-up to issue 22's ending. She also changes her look into something closer to her iconic outfit, with a purple hood cowl ensemble that actually kind of makes her look like Batgirl a little. At least in the first panel she shows up in it, especially since she has her miscolored hair being red instead of blonde. Yeah, I'll get into the whole hair changing colors thing later on. This one actually shows her having a nine lives gimmick so she can rebuild her gang faster, having her henchmen throw rubber knives and shoot blanks at her, all for the fun to heist diamonds off a dirigible. After her dirigible follies, we get a Christmas tale from Batman number 39. It is a pretty standard story. Catwoman tries to pull off a heist with cats. Batman goes to stop her. The only thing that really worth noting, besides her doing a join me and we can rule the underworld together shtick, we actually get to see her save Batman from being shot. Sure, it's one of her own henchmen, but it's just a nice thing to see for reflecting the relationship that may form or has already started forming. And now we hop over to Detective Comics number 122, where she appears with her classic Golden Age outfit, the green cape and purple cowl, looking much more inspired by the Batman's look of the day, which, if given her history thus far, wouldn't be too far of a stretch if she was trying to mirror him. And the comparisons don't stop there. We we're also introduced to the Kitty Car, which has one thing better than the Batmobile. It can jump. Which actually leads to the climax of this comic where she jumps a bridge, but no one knows if she lives or dies at the end. 
I want to bring up that these are the days where continuity really wasn't truly a thing in these picture books. As her next appearance in Batman number 42, she's in prison as though she hadn't had the adventures in Detective Comics 122. But really, the only interesting thing about this issue is, besides using fictional fake felines for her follies, she escapes from prison in a really kind of awesome way. She is given a book in jail with the signal to spell cat, that would be the pages 3, 1, and 20, balling them up and then lighting them on fire to blow the door off her prison cell. Yeah, it's so very comic booky, but it works on a generalist level that I think is kind of neat. In Batman number 45, she uses seven dwarves to assist her, but when midges step up, Batman has to stomp them right back down. Then in Batman number 47, it's a pretty typical she broke out of jail and goes to get jewels kind of story, but the next issue is a real pride and joy for Golden Age Catwoman. Batman number 62 is the original origin story for our feline fatale. So Mr. X breaks Catwoman out of jail so they can be partners. Well, while on a solo heist, a building almost falls on Batman and Robin, but Catwoman hops in to save them, only to be knocked unconscious by the debris. When she awakes, she's in the Batcave, having no memory of her life of crime. In fact, she asks about the passengers. That's right. Her name is Selina Kyle, and she's a stewardess, or was until she was struck over the head and then turned to a life of crime. Her father owned a pet shop, and that's where she learned all about cats. Well, she uses her newfound goodness to help Batman and Robin catch Mr. X. And with the caper closed, Miss Kyle hands over her Catwoman outfit to the commissioner, swearing that Catwoman has retired. I could just wrap up my video series here, because clearly Selina Kyle will never return LIES AND SLANDER! Yeah, okay, spoilers, she makes a comeback in three issues. Not exactly a lengthy time, I know. However, Batman number 65 does keep the continuity, unlike the Detective Comics hiccup earlier, with the title asking whether or not she's on the side of good or is back to her old ways. Well, the truth of the matter is, it actually kind of leaves you guessing for a bit. While she does inevitably turn out to be fighting the good fight, the first half of this story, with cat-themed crimes and very ambiguous clues that may be circumstantial, but in a world where costume crime fighters and villains are a thing, you find a horde of cats attacking a jewelry store, you would instantly think, why not the cat-themed villainess? Four issues after that, however, we get to see the King of Cats, the moniker of what I assume would be Proto-Catman. Actually, this is another solid, though still very aged, story about Catwoman being tempted back to the dark side. And we see, as the reader, that she does get tempted back over. She dons her green cape again and joins the Cat King. But in a twist, the reason she went over to the Cat King's side was to try and reform her brother. Yep, Carl Kyle is the office meds brother of Selina. I bet he'll be involved in a lot of future events! Right. Or we can hop over to Detective Comics again and, well, due to newspaper articles retelling about how Batman conquered Catwoman, made the then-reformed Selina Kyle long for the days of excitement and villainy. Again, she dons her cape and cowl and becomes the Catwoman, complete with a new kitty car. She then goes on her usual routine of crime, but like last time, it ends on a cliffhanger of whether she's dead or not, though sadly no grand leaps in her jalopy. Batman number 84 is a pretty standard story of Selina, now firmly back as Catwoman, rigging a beauty contest so she can win the prize. Yeah. And to wrap up her Golden Age run, Detective Comics number 211. This issue is her first appearance in a jungle setting, where she lures the dynamic duo to her island, but decides to have a cat and mouse game with them instead of just killing them outright. As you do. This obviously backfires and they foil her diamond mining operation, but she rides off on the back of a big-ass tiger. So, 1954 was the last year we'd see her. This was largely due to her character being a possible violation of the Comic Code Authority's developing rules for female portrayal that started that very year. It would take over a decade to see her emerge back onto the comic scene. But first, a wrap-up of her Golden Age appearances. Catwoman is amazing. Reading through these first stories of hers, you can see why she struck a chord with young readers, both girls and boys. She's formidable to Batman with her tricks and plots, while also being able to use her raw femininity to escape Batman countless times. It is hard for some people to look back with the current views that we hold of the 40s and 50s and understand that this character wasn't the stereotypical woman of the era, but wasn't equal to Batman even if she was on the fence as to which team she played for. Also, you will never know how much I dislike her first Detective Comics appearance, giving her gimmicks and accessories that one could analyze as her becoming more like her crush Batman. It was written as though the writer had been given a sentence to describe that she was a cat-themed person, and that was it. Though, to be fair, I'm looking at it over 50 years later, so this look is obviously skewed a little bit. Another interesting thing to note is that before we learned her secret identity, her hair changed colors and her finer features changed. While originally I thought that this was just a colorist issue, I slowly 
started building in my mind that due to the nature of her creation, as a character she originally didn't embody one single woman. Instead, her looks changed in universe as disguises and the like, but outside it was a reflection of the Catwoman, before being cemented with a name or backstory, was meant to represent any woman. But enough fan theories, let's continue the video with the gander at her Silver Age appearances. But before I go into the Silver Age, I'd like to point out that the Silver Age wasn't some brand new world like any of the crises that have come before. Really, the Silver Age just marks a point of reference, that being the first appearance of Barry Allen as the new Flash in Showcase No. 4 in 1956. It did test the waters and led to an eventual splitting of the worlds, leaving the Golden Age and Earth 2, but that's a whole debate unto itself, because unlike every other hero that seemed to have been rebooted in 1959, Batman and Superman did not. So it is tricky to pinpoint when Batman and Superman hit the Silver Age is hit the Silver Age's new world. But honestly, none of that matters, because Catwoman didn't appear until 1966, close to when the Silver Age would end. First in March, when Julie Newmar portrayed her on the Batman TV show of the time, and then in November, where Catwoman finally made her comeback in comics in... Oh lord. Superman's girlfriend Lois Lane number 70. Oh boy, her first Silver Age appearance in an age where characters could really only fight monsters, aliens, and other relatively harmless creatures. How did the feline fatale work out? Um, well, she brainwashes Lois Lane into thinking that she's Catwoman, and while that's going on, she kisses Superman that then turns him into a cat. Okay, I will admit that I really dislike the attitude of comics during the Silver Age, so it may color my perception on the rest of this video. I will say that I do like her new outfit, which is her green cape and purple dress, only instead of being a dress, it's a cat suit, fittingly. But then again, this really was the time for pointless storylines, because seduction of the innocent really ruined it for everyone. So we'll jump ahead past some muck to the final page of a story in Detective Comics number 369, where she thinks that Batgirl is trying to steal Bruce away from her. Yes, they aren't actually dating yet, and it's weird. The story is followed up on in Batman number 197, where Catwoman appears in a very out of left field green cat suit, which I suppose is meant to look more like her outfit in the show, except very, very green. It's like if the Riddler gave her this outfit. Well, the plot of this issue is that Catwoman has become a crook catcher to try and woo Batman and show up Batgirl. How'd that go? Well, what do you think? Batman doesn't propose to her because clearly Catwoman is insane with jealousy and she turns back to being evil. She's clearly off her meds on this one, though they do actually mention that she's reformed once before, so it gets a nice nod to the Golden Age stories. But that all changes. See, in Batman number 210, Catwoman gets another new look and it's very sweet. Christmas! Oh, oh god, man, that design, yeesh. So yeah, in her new outfit with the, oh, come on, okay, okay, with her Cadillac? Ugh. Also, that really goofy mask is actually a very basic version of her cat goggles that allow her to see in the dark. But oh, if only they were the only thing she brought to the party. She gets eight paroled villainesses, all with a gripe against the man, I don't know, just go with it, to wear exact duplicates of her costume and shape up to look like her. They're her feline furies. Yeah, I know. And all I have to say is that one of those feline furies is named Big Barbara. If you don't know why that's funny, your ass better call some Kirby. Let's skip a bit ahead to 1972 where she goes to try and pilfer a cursed ruby right out of Wonder Woman's hand. Well, technically Diana Prince's hand because at the time, she was depowered due to the Amazonians leaving our dimension. Actually, this is interestingly a two-parter with Catwoman acting as a competitor and partner with Diana, with Wonder Woman number 201 acting with them getting the ruby, but then number 202 slings them into a fantasy dimension where they have to team up to defeat an evil sorceress. Needless to say, this little romp doesn't actually affect Catwoman's criminal career throughout the Silver Age, and really it isn't until Batman number 266 in 1975 that something major for her character actually happens, and that's her hopping back over to her purple dress and green cape after busting out of jail. See, my problem with the Silver Age is that it does have a status quo, but it's so dull to talk about. Catwoman breaks out of jail or goes to steal something, Batman comes in to save the day, hijinks ensues. So let's go with a quick rundown of her exploits until we hit something relevant. Let's see, she fails to take down a girl running around calling herself Catgirl, first appearance of someone with that official name by the way. She drops her US citizenship so she can become ambassador to Sidaria and gets thwarted by Batman and Wonder Woman. Oh, during this time they showcase a lot of 
of Earth 2 stories in the offbeat comics like DC Superstars and Batman Family, showing Huntress for the first time and really cementing home that the current continuity isn't from the Golden Age. This one's interesting though. In 1979, Selina Kyle reforms again and asks Bruce Wayne out on a date. And they do have a short fling and then a few issues later, she learns that she has an illness that could kill her at any moment. So Catman blows into town. No, not her brother from earlier, but a man inspired by Catwoman, who doesn't become a decent character until Secret Six. Ooh, Secret Six, I miss you. Catman has a magical cloak that actually heals Catwoman, but not until after being parboiled alive in a geyser. But they do call off their romance for the moment. Here's something even more interesting. So Catwoman actually got her first solo story as backup, starting with Batman number 332, though it does tie into the main storyline of that piece, The Lazarus Affair, a four-part story where Batman, Robin, Catwoman, and King Faraday are up against Ra's al Ghul. And more importantly, it really shows the swing that Catwoman has made from being just a burglar to an anti-heroine. Of course, a few issues later in Batman 348, Catwoman gets hired to protect a presidential candidate and his wife. Then in 350, she has to pretend to be a stripper named Candy that looks exactly like her to solve her murder. Yeah. Of course, a bit later, an unhinged Catwoman decides to go after Vicky Vale because she's Batman's new beau. And, well, this is the issue where Batman puts his foot down finally, that there can and will never be anything between them ever again. Fun times. All the while, other comics were publishing Tales of Earth 2, where Catwoman and Batman have gotten married, sired a daughter, but all that changed when the Crisis of Infinite Earths came in, and they wiped out all other Earths to make a single Earth. Though, sad fact, the then-Earth 2 version, which was the pre-crisis designation for the Golden Age characters, died as seen in the origin of Huntress in DC Superstars number 17. But she dies in Batman's arms, so it's kind of sweet. While Earth-1, the then Silver Age world, she is last seen in Batman number 400, battling alongside Batman, ending it all, ending this run of the character in 1986. Since we're reaching the time where Batman Year One came out, twisting the Batman mythos on its head and generally giving a new start to the Bat franchise, I think here is where I'm going to end for today. My overall view of her time before the modern age is that as a character, she was at her best when working with Batman for her own ends. That isn't to say that she wasn't an interesting or unique character since her inception, but they truly start spinning their wheels for development with the character after her and Bats finally got a relationship going. It sort of reminds me of Ross and Rachel from friends. Huh. Huh, I actually think Jennifer Aniston might make a neat cat woman. Okay, before I start thinking too hard on that, I'll see you all next week with the next installment of Archives, where we delve into the post-Miller world of Batman and his feline fatale. If you liked this video, like, share, and subscribe. The more we get this out, the more I can actually do more of these retrospectives and generally deal with this channel overall. I do have a Patreon, and you can actually pick what's the next retrospective you want me to do. Check all that in the links below. As always, like me on Facebook, follow me on Twitter, and stay golden, Inklings!